What should a place that someone lives in be? That's the question that I decided to ask 10 months ago. You'll notice I don't use the word house. And the reason for that is we're all very familiar with the concept of a house. So naturally, there's certain assumptions that we all make about what a house is. You know, if I were to ask you, what should a house be? You might say something like, a house should be a place that has walls or a roof. And those seem like pretty safe assumptions to make. Most of the houses I've seen have those things. But a lot of people, maybe not you, when they think of a house, they make certain other assumptions, like a house should be a certain number of square feet, or a house should be built on a concrete foundation. And those assumptions, I think, are a little bit more problematic. So rather than start with any assumptions in answering this question, what I decided to do is start with four principal words, four building block words that comprise the foundation of what I want to build. So what should a place that someone lives in be? Well, first, it should be affordable. It doesn't matter how luxurious or amazing a place is. If no one can afford to live in it, then what's the point? Second, it should be comfortable. The place we live is somewhere where we're going to spend a lot of time. So I think it's somewhere that should make us feel good, that we enjoy spending time. Third, it should be efficient. The materials that we use to build this building should work together as a well-oiled machine that operates as greater than the sum of its parts. What I'm referring to there is energy efficiency, and I'll get into that. And finally, the place that we live should be sustainable. It should be somewhere that lasts not decades, but centuries. And it should have as little as possible an effect on its surrounding environment. So I started with these four general words. And then I had to build up to the more specific. I had to figure out what is this actually going to be? You know, you can't build a house out of four words. And so in my research, what I found and came up with was the concept of natural building, which is simply using materials that you can find in your local environment to build extremely affordable, environmentally friendly, and personal buildings. So I found natural building and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And then I decided to ask, how can I use this to help people? And so what I decided to do in April of 2016 with my friend Stephen Burns is I founded Y Innovations, a nonprofit organization. And together, Steve and I started our sustainable development project with the goal of using natural building techniques to create affordable and environmentally friendly housing for low income and si homeless citizens. So I started with natural building. And the first project that we did this past summer was the Siegel JCC. And it was with a material called cob. Cob is clay, sand, and straw. The building was at the Siegel JCC. It was about 200 square feet. It cost about $1,200 in materials to build. And we had over 40 student volunteers from five different high schools spend over 800 service hours working on the project. It was incredible. So now what we're seeking to do is combine the best elements of cob with the best elements of another natural building technique called straw bale construction. And we're working with an organization called Family Promise, who works with homeless families. And we're seeking to build our first naturally built home for a homeless family right here in Delaware. So for the past couple months, I've been working with architects, with contractors, with professional natural builders, and with building permit officials. And I've been working on building plans, nailing out the specifics behind how this is actually going to go. So now I want to share with you my vision, my image for what this house is going to be. And the way that I want to do that is by using those four principal words we laid out for what a place that someone lives in should be. And I want to compare what I'm proposing to build with more traditional methods of building and show you just how affordable, just how comfortable, just how efficient, and just how sustainable what I'm seeking to build will be. So to begin with, it's going to be about a 540 square foot, one story home. The main exterior walls are going to be built with straw bales. The interior walls, the floors, they're all going to be built with cob. And I'll get into the reasoning for that in a minute. As far as affordability, the raw material cost of construction is going to be $10,000, which comes out to a little bit under $19 per square foot. The national average for new housing construction in the United States is about $130 per square foot. So we're a little bit under that. So that's the material affordability. Combine that with the fact that it's going to be a 
under 600 square foot home compared to the over 2,600 square foot that's average, you can quickly see how this is gonna be a lot more materially affordable than traditional buildings. You know, ask your parents, you can't find a house for $10,000, that's crazy. All right, now for comfort. So this home's gonna have all the modern amenities that a traditional home would have. Heat, running water, electricity, toaster ovens for your Pop-Tarts in the morning if you're into that. I don't know if you're into that. My brother really likes Pop-Tarts. Um, we're not creating substandard housing. But beyond that, there's something very personal, very homey about natural building. And in order to communicate that, I have a couple pictures here. They're from buildings that a man by the name of Chris McClellan built. He's a professional natural builder. He lives up in Ohio. I actually got a chance to visit him this past October. You can see that picture there on the right. That's a cob building. And what Chris did is he took bottles and he put them in the shape of a sunflower and created a sunflower window. It's little details like that that just give natural built homes that added touch of personality. All right, now for efficiency. So we already said we're shooting for material efficiency. We're shooting for a home that is cheaper to build up front in terms of material costs. But beyond that, we're shooting for a home that is sustainably affordable in the long run to maintain. And the way we're doing that is with energy efficiency and with those straw bale exterior walls. The really nice thing about straw bale walls is that they're extremely good insulators. Insulation is basically the property of a wall of how good it is at keeping heat inside the building. So obviously in a home in a colder climate like our, ours, where you're gonna be heating the home in the winter, you know, you want walls that are good insulators, otherwise all the heat's gonna escape, you're gonna to have to spend more keeping yourself warm. Walls and insulation values are measured in something called R values, with higher R values corresponding to higher levels of insulation in the wall. Traditionally, an R value around R20 is considered really good. The walls we're planning to build are gonna be in excess of R40. And so that means is they're gonna be a lot more energy efficient. They're gonna do a lot better job of keeping heat in. And that means energy savings, cost savings for the homeowner every single month. Finally, sustainability. The biggest problem, or one of the big problems that I see with traditional building applications in regards to sustainability is the use of concrete. Concrete's used a lot for things like foundations and traditional applications. And the problem with concrete, in my opinion, is that its main component is cement, which is created through a process of heating shale and limestone at temperatures in excess of 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a process that releases 1.8 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere annually. And I won't get on a tangent about global warming or climate change, but I'll just say that I think we need to take personal responsibility and look at what kind of effect are the buildings, the things we're creating, having on our environment. So that's why this home that we're proposing to build uses zero concrete. Not on the foundation, not anywhere. Finally, I just want to say that a year ago, I would not have been expecting to be here. I wasn't thinking about any of these kinds of things. But I asked a question. And I relentlessly pursued the answers. I still relentlessly pursue the answers to those questions because I truly believe that they can help people. So my challenge to you today would be, one, ask questions. Let your natural curiosity guide you in asking questions that truly fascinate you. Two, seek out the answers to those questions relentlessly. The power of hard work can never be underestimated. And three, always remember to ask yourself, how can what I'm, be, what I'm learning be used to help the world around me? How can I pay it forward? If you do those things, I think you'll be truly amazed at just how capable you are. Thank you.